to perform elbow range of motion, start by making a fist with your thumb on the outside of the fist with both hands. Squeeze your fist together. Then bend your elbow and rotate your palm of your hand so that it faces down. Then extend your elbow. Continue performing this movement over and over again. You can also hold your elbows in a flex position and rotate your palms upward and downward prior to extending your elbow again. Perform what feels comfortable for you and make sure that you go slowly enough that you allow yourself to reach your end range of motion at each point. To perform wrist range of motion, start with your elbow in a flex position and your palm upright. Place your opposite hand on your forearm to help make sure that you are able to maintain this start position throughout and not rotating your arm as you move your wrist. Then begin rotating your wrist in a circular motion as slowly as you can tolerate going. You'll want to rotate towards your pinky side and towards your thumb side. So choose which side you'd like to start with first. Your goal is to rotate your wrist in a circular motion as slow as possible, making sure that you reach your end range of motion at each point throughout the circle. Again, try to make sure that you are not allowing your forearm to rotate upward or downward any more than it is in the start position. Perform this in as slow as possible and as many times as you feel comfortable doing. Now we will go over some wrist specific movements. Start seated or standing with your forearm on a firm surface with your wrist and hand hanging off the edge. You'll want to support your arm by using your opposite hand to apply pressure to your forearm. Then you will start with your palm upward and pull your palm up towards you. Make sure that you allow yourself to feel the end range of motion, both at the top and bottom of the movement. You should start performing with no weight and progress with, with weight or resistance once you begin gaining strength. To perform this exercise with weight or banded resistance, Simply assume the same start position and apply the resistance as you go through the motion. When using a weight, make sure that you keep your hand as flat as possible and are not pulling your pinky side or thumb side up faster or further than the rest of your hand. Make sure to go slow and not let the resistance pull you during the movement. To perform wrist extension, assume the same start position as with wrist flexion. However, this time you will have your palm facing down and supporting your forearm on the back side of your forearm using your opposite hand. Again, allow your wrist and hand to hang off the edge of the firm surface. Pull the back of your hand up towards you and then push it all the way back down. Again, make sure that you are achieving end range of motion and not stopping yourself short of how far you actually can go. Make sure that you start performing this movement with no weight and make sure that you're moving your hand as a single unit and keeping it as even and steady as possible. Once you're ready, you can add weight or banded resistance and perform the motion in the same way. Again, make sure that you are moving your hand as a single unit and not allowing your pinky or thumb side of your hand to move faster. Lastly, we will go over pronation and supination. This simply means turning your palm up and down, which causes rotation at the wrist and at the elbow. Start in the same seated position or standing position with your forearm on a firm surface and wrist and hand hanging off the edge. Start with no resistance. 
Once you are ready, you can add resistance such as a stick, roller, or other longer object that creates weight at the end of the object. You'll start with your hand in a neutral position and allow the palm of your hand to rotate upwards and downwards as far as you can tolerate going. Again, make sure that you are allowing yourself to achieve end range of motion before adding weight and allowing the weight to help you essentially stretch into that end range of motion with each repetition. Make sure that you move slowly and that you are in control of the motion throughout the entire process. If you feel the weight is pulling you too much, you may need to start with a lighter object or a shorter object so that you can have more control over the motion.